Hello friends. Today we're going to cover our NICU journey, what it took to bring our baby Violet home from the NICU and how it's been since she's been home. First of all, I just need to say what a journey this has been. If you are new here or you just need some reminders, let me quickly just tell you the backstory of our daughter Violet. Oh, hopefully we can get through it without crying. If, if I can't, that's understandable as well. We were very excited to find out that we were pregnant with twin baby girls oh, back last summer. Unfortunately, I developed something called twin twin transfusion and almost lost both the babies. It was really hard. I got sent to Denver, Colorado because they do not perform um, any surgeries for twin to twin transfusion in the state of Alaska. There's actually only a few places in the United States that they do do the surgery. So um, my high risk doctor sent us to Denver. We were very hopeful that <sighs> getting surgery would lead to having two healthy babies born. So I had surgery around 20 weeks. After surgery, you stick around for about five days and do a follow-up. At the five-day follow-up appointment, unfortunately, they told us that baby A was not going to make it because of complications from surgery, that the surgery was only semi-successful. And so that was really, really hard to hear. There was nothing else that they would do for us. And so we decided to come home to Alaska. We had a follow-up appointment with my doctor. The following Monday, we flew home on a Thursday or Friday, I can't remember. And by that Monday, our baby A had passed away. So, it's still hard. When you get ablation surgery, which is what I got to um, help the twins, they have to go through an amniotic sac. Because of that surgery, you usually only stay pregnant for another 10 to 12 weeks, is what they tell you. But they also say you could go full term. It, it, you just don't know. But because the amniotic sac cannot be sewn up, you have this risk of rupture. So this was back at the end of October when we lost baby A. In my mind, I was going to make it till February. I just wanted to make it till February. I wanted to get through the holidays. And then I thought, okay, January, we'll get everything together. And then we'll have um, baby B early February in my mind, like first couple days of February or late January. Um, but I knew that was pushing it. I was just hopeful that that was what could happen just so that baby B could have as much time inside as possible. And yes, baby A and baby B do both have names. Uh, baby A is Magnolia, or we call her Maggie. Uh, baby B is Violet. They are flower babies and they are named after my grandmothers. From here on out, I will refer to them as Maggie and Violet. So, on December 23rd, we were finishing up Christmas preparations and I thought, I'm just gonna go take a shower and just relax. I went in to go take a shower and my water broke. So Mark and I called my sister. She came and took care of our other kids. My husband's parents were out of town. My parents live in Arizona during the winter, so they were not here. Um, and we headed into the hospital. There are two videos that explain everything that happened, but the short version is that after some different tests and checking on the babies, it was baby A or Maggie's water that had broken. She had already passed away. She was still inside me. Um, they put me on medication to slow things down. I ended up having baby Maggie on Christmas day. Um, and then they tried to keep me pregnant. Um, my body was not having it. And I ended up having our daughter Violet 10 weeks early um, on December 26th. Violet was three pounds, eight ounces when she was born and taken. As you can imagine, that was a time of very intense 
high and low emotions. Um, but we were very grateful that we got a day with Maggie um, before I ended up having Violet and so we could honor her and then um, welcome Violet into the family and be able to give her the attention that she needed being in the NICU or the intensive care unit. One thing that I did in the NICU that was very, very helpful was I kept a log every single day because NICU life is very hard. It is all a blur. Lots of people will have questions and you won't remember. So I kept a log every single day. Each week I would start a new note in my phone. So I have Violet week one, week two, week three, week four, all the way to week six when we got to bring her home. They told us she would be there eight to 10 weeks because she was 10 weeks early, but Violet was a champion and got to come home at six weeks. I promise her neck is fine. She is very well supported and very comfortable here. Okay, so let's go through our NICU journey just briefly. Week one, she was in the level three NICU. This is the only level three NICU in the entire state of Alaska. So we felt like we were in really good hands. Um, she had to be on the CPAP machine just because of her age and they stay on CPAP until 32 weeks. She was tiny. I have big babies, like eight, nine, 10 pounds, 13 ounce babies. So having a three pound, eight ounce baby was very, very tiny and very different. They were very limited on who they would let visit because of germs. It was cold and flu season, it's RSV season, and these babies are really at risk. So unless we would hold her skin to skin for two to three hours at a time, we weren't even supposed to pick them up, pick her up. Oh, Miss Luna just came and jumped up behind the camera. Let's say hello to Luna. Hi, sweet girl. We'll talk about how Luna's doing here in just a minute. She's gonna sit and look out the window while we do our video. So in those first few uh, days, my sister came to visit, my parents came to visit, and but nobody held Violet except for Mark and I, and we had to sit with her for long periods of time. Um, it's just hard for the babies if you're jostling them too much. She did have to be under the Billy Rubin light for several days, and we were not allowed to pick her up for more than like an hour and a half on those days, so we got a little bit of a break, and I spent a little bit more time at home with our other children. It was a bit tricky, and we had to figure out really quickly that our life was gonna be very different for the next six, eight, 10 weeks, um, having a baby in the NICU while having four other children at home. So week one was spent cuddling. I went home from the hospital and was no longer a patient. Um, you can sleep in the hospital in the NICU rooms, but it just didn't work for our family for me to stay. Uh, the family needed me at home as well, and I just needed to get some rest. I was recovering from a very traumatic um, double birth and losing our other daughter. So um, being home was just the best at this point in the journey. So week one was spent on the CPAP machine and as much skin to skin as possible. And she went from three pounds, eight ounces down to three pounds, two ounces in that week. Week two, she started putting on a little bit more weight. She was still on the CPAP machine. Our oldest son, Hunter, was able to come and visit her. Our younger two sons were never able to come visit her in the NICU. It was only like 12 and older because of RSV season. And we just had to follow those rules. There were no exceptions. And so only our older two boys got to come visit their sister while she was in the hospital. So towards the end of week two, she was able to get off her CPAP machine and she did fantastic. So they were able to completely remove it and move her to level two NICU, which is just a lower level. It, the nurses have two to three babies instead of just two to take care of and they can breathe on their own or just with some oxygen. She actually never had to be on oxygen, which was an absolute miracle with her being so early. The other fun thing about week two was Mark's parents got home from their Christmas vacation and were able to come and visit Violet and um, even hold her because she was off of the CPAP machine and my parents were able to come visit also and hold her. When she was on the CPAP machine, it was really hard because they had to have a respiratory therapist and a nurse come and help you pick her up and put her back so it was just really tricky but we were happy to have that big machine off her face in week two and she was able to be a little bit more easier to hold and we continued just to do lots of skin to skin and visit her as much as possible so by the end of week two she surpassed her birth weight and was up to three pounds 11 ounces week three mark was back to his 
uh, regular work schedule and would go and visit her on the way to work. I would stay home until all the boys had made it to school and then I would make my way to the NICU. And we really just kind of got into a routine of me spending the day at the NICU and Mark taking care of most of the things at home along with my parents. I did not mention that when I had the baby, uh, my parents booked a ticket and were here by the next day and planned on staying. We have an apartment attached to our house that they live in during the summertime. So my parents were here to pick up the slack of Mark and I needing to be in the NICU and go to work and things like that. And we could not be more grateful for all the help that they gave to us because we had so much going on. They really were able to just fill in the gaps where Mark and I were not able to with our other children. So I forgot to mention that, but that was an integral part of all of this working. My parents were here, they have their own space, but they helped with meals, they helped with cleaning, they helped with rides to and from activities. They helped so much. Week three was just spent growing, still continuing to be fed by an NG tube. She was 33 weeks. They don't let you try and feed them with a bottle or breastfeeding until they're a bit older because they need to learn how to suck, swallow, and breathe, and they're still just too small for that. And by the end of week three, she was four pounds, seven ounces, which we were very excited about. In the fourth week in the NICU, um, our son Bennett finally got to come visit uh, Violet and hold her, which was really special because he loves babies. Man, he was so big compared to this teeny tiny baby. Seeing her with her big brothers, just like, it was so good for my mama heart. He only came for a few minutes, but it was just really special. At the end of week four, Violet was starting to show signs of being ready to eat. So when they're approaching about 34, 35 weeks, they start keeping track of hunger cues. Is the baby waking up at feeding times in the NICU, at least our NICU, they feed them every three hours pretty much on the dot. You do a diaper change, um, you do their checks like for temperature and things, and then you feed them every three hours. And this is through an NG tube. So um, if they're starting to wake up at those feeding times and instead of just sleeping right through them, um, when they're starting to really suck on a pacifier, when they're rooting around, they get scores. And once they get high enough scores, they are willing to let you start trying to feed your baby. Now, at first I thought that I would just breastfeed her I tried several times uh, doing what was called non-nutritive feeding where you just let them practice after you have pumped. And she was slightly interested, but it felt very stressful because you have to weigh them before you breastfeed them, weigh them after to see how much they got, and then they would um, send the rest down the feeding tube. Um, Usually there was somebody standing over you, you only had a certain amount of time, and it got really stressful for me. So I'm gonna be honest about my feeding journey with Violet here. I did breastfeed all my other children. Fed is best. I had a heart to heart with one of my favorite nurses that just loved Violet, and I said, how do I get her out of here if I'm breastfeeding? It just seems like it would be really hard and a very long journey to get her out if I'm just exclusively breastfeeding. And she said, really, to get them out of the NICU quicker, you need to let us bottle feed her because if you are gone eating and she's showing signs of being hungry, if you go home for the night and we can't feed her, she'll be here for a really long time. So I made the decision to, when they thought she was ready, that we could do breastfeeding or bottle feeding, which really essentially turned into just bottle feeding. Um, it didn't really work out for me to breastfeed her while she was in the NICU. Um, it was just really stressful. So we focused our energy on bottle feeding, which took a lot of energy. Um, I came in one day and she was getting pretty good scores on that paper, but I wasn't sure like when they were gonna let me feed her a bottle. And I was just about to leave for the night. It was around nine o'clock and shift change happens at seven o'clock and the nurse came in and she said, oh, Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, last night she was rooting around and I wanted to give her a bottle so bad, but I wanted you to be able to give her the first bottle. So do you wanna feed her a bottle? And I just dropped all my stuff and I said, yes. And my sister was there with me and I got to feed Violet her first bottle. And 
it's tricky feeding a preemie baby a bottle. You can't go too fast. You have to pace them. You got to watch for their cues. You got to let them breathe. It, it's tricky. There's a certain way you got to hold them. There's a certain way you got to burp them. So it's not just like stick a bottle in their mouth and let them feed. And they get really sleepy. So you have about 30 minutes to see how much food you can get them to eat and they keep track of it. And whatever they don't eat, the rest gets put down their feeding tube and you can try again the next time. So at 28 days old or 34 weeks and four days, she hit five pounds and she got to have her first bottle. And it was really special. I was grateful that I got to be there with her. Um, one thing you find when you are in a NICU situation is that the nurses are all amazing, but some of them will really help you along in your journey more than others. Um, usually ones that get to know your baby will help you move them forward. You can have those honest conversations with them. This nurse, Tisha, was so helpful and so enthusiastic about feeding her and being ready to feed her all night. Um, so she got several bottles from that nurse overnight. Once you start feeding by mouth, the goal is to get 80% of their milk by mouth for 48 hours. The doctors were honest with me. They said, you are now in feeding purgatory is what the nurse practitioner told me. She says, don't expect it to go quickly. This is just the beginning, um, but we'll keep track and we'll just do our best to feed her as much as possible. But she would get really tired. Um, she would, you know, kind of cough and choke. And so you had to be really careful. So I just knew that over the next few weeks, my focus would be on pumping and having milk for her and trying to feed her the bottles. So at week five, she was five pounds which is still so tiny. And we focused on bottle feeding. Mark would come and give her a bottle before he went to work. And then I would come during the day and give her bottles. And then the night nurses, if they had time, would give her bottles. If they didn't, they would just put it down her NG tube. She did have some spitting up that uh, the doctors were concerned with, um, but she seemed to respond okay to just being slightly elevated and slower feedings. But we knew that that was a possibility. Babies in the NICU especially, you know, any baby this can happen to, but especially babies that are in the NICU, their esophagus isn't closed up yet, that sphincter, and so it's just easy for food to come right back up. But we just did our best to keep her upright after feedings and just to not feed her too quickly. But the whole reflux thing, um, was a small issue while in the NICU. So week five is where we really started to ramp up working on Violet's room because she started drinking from a bottle. We're like, okay, we need to have her things a little bit more organized to bring her home. So if you saw that video of us doing the room, we started really focusing on that around week five. So there is a list of things that you have to do to get out of the NICU. One of those is taking a CPR class. So in week five, Mark and I did that. We brought the car seat in, just put it in the corner of the room. So when they were ready to do a car seat test, that would um, be there. And we just kept working with her on bottles. So by the end of week five, she was five pounds, five ounces. So by week six, she was eating about 60% of her feedings by mouth. Again, the goal was 80 to 90% for 48 hours. So we just continually worked with her. We did find out in week six that Violet had a heart murmur, which, you know, you never want to hear that your baby has something wrong with their heart. So that was kind of hard to hear. So she was getting ultrasounds and things done of her heart. And it did turn out that she had two holes in her heart. Um, but they said, if they're gonna have a hole in their heart, these are the ones you want to have. Essentially, every baby has these, but they usually close up within a couple of days. Hers were just hopefully taking a little bit longer to close up, but she did have a heart murmur. So um, that was a little bit hard to hear uh, when you already have so much to worry about, but the nurse was really great and um, printed things out and explained to me what was happening and they were very hopeful that it would clear up on its own and would not require any further attention. So when Violet was 36 weeks and one day old, it was a Saturday, I was getting ready to go into the NICU. I usually went in a little bit later um, on Saturday mornings just to spend some time with the family, um, but one of the most amazing nurses that we had, her name was Cindy, um, she had been working with Violet quite often and she called me and she was really frustrated because um, we had gotten Violet up to 
80 like six percent several days in a row with her daytime feedings and then the night nurse that came on was getting too busy to feed her a bottle and would just put it down her ng tube and that would make our um, percentage drop down and so it was kind of frustrating when you'd come in in the morning because you'd leave and she'd be at like 90 percent, and you'd come in and she'd be down at like 60 or 70 percent by mouth well, Cindy had seen the whole thing happen. She'd been with us for um, three days and she'd been with us three days the week previous. So she's like, she knew she was going to go on her, you know, a couple days off and she didn't want to see Violet backslide because of different nurses coming in. So she talked to the doctors and said, hey, these parents are here. They're feeding her the bottles. They're getting her up to almost 90%. And then she's backsliding during the night. Um, I think we should start the discharge, pro the discharge process, which is when the parents come in and take over for around 48 hours, spend the night at the hospital, um, and show that the baby can eat ad lib. You can feed them whenever the baby is showing hunger cues. And as long as the baby, um, in this case, Violet, as long as Violet was putting on weight over those two days, then, um, we could be discharged. So Cindy called me at home, which you never really want to get a call from the NICU. Cause you're like, ah, what's going on? And she said, I am going to do the car seat test. I'm going to pull her feeding tube, pack a bag and come and stay with Violet, which was music to my ears. So I did just that, went to the hospital, planning on staying for the next 48 hours. And let me tell you, those were a rough 48 hours. Um, I did not get almost any sleep that night because they came in at like 1.30 in the morning and did her heart x-rays um, or her MR or whatever they do for your heart. You know, they needed to do a follow-up with the that before she got to go home. So that happened at like 1.30 in the morning um, every little noise she made all night I was just like oh. plus I was needing to feed her whenever she was showing cues so that didn't mean every three hours anymore it was just whenever she woke up and she was getting bigger at this point and needing more attention um, the nurses at that point are just there to support you um, so they were wonderful but I was in charge of all diaper changes and checks and everything so um, I was very tired by the next morning. By Sunday morning, I texted Mark and I said, I need your help. So he um, took the boys to church and then my parents took over, brought them home and he came to the hospital and spent the next um, pretty much all day with me on Sunday. And he let me get a good nap in and did the bottles and we just kind of uh, work together. He brought me a bunch of food so I didn't have to leave Violet um, for long periods of time. And we just worked together all day and she kept her weight up. Mark did go home for the night. That second night was much better. I was just calmer and we were able to just get everything that night that we needed to. The next day, it's not a quick process to get them home. They have a whole list. You got to meet with the pharmacist. You got to meet with the doctors. They got to do discharge. You got to go get any medications that we needed. And we were on a couple medications when she came home. So we had a whole list of things. And it was about uh, probably about three in the afternoon before we were ready to walk out of that hospital with Miss Violet. It was kind of surreal. I actually had my six week checkup with my OB, which is in the same hospital in that same day. I ran upstairs and had my six week OB check, which felt crazy since I had been at the hospital pretty much every single day since having Violet. But I was glad that I wouldn't have to come back to the hospital. So that worked out really nicely that I was able to go run upstairs and get that taken care of so that I wouldn't have to leave the house right away once she was home. So when you're in the NICU and you are providing your baby with breast milk, they have a small refrigerator. So you are pumping and you put it in the refrigerator and then these beautiful women, well, I, I assume they were all women, every time I saw it, it was a woman, um, come in, they're like the little milk fairies and they come in and they gather all your milk and then they divide it up into the exact amount that the doctor wants the baby to be having at each feeding. They add in any um, extra things that they need, think the baby needs. And um, sometimes they need some extra formula or things like that added. They have a nutritionist that tells them what to put in their, their milk. So every day, these ladies would come and gather up my milk and then they bring back these syringes full of the amount of milk that you needed. 
And one day I asked one of the sweet ladies, I said, are you using all my milk? And she said, oh yes, all your milk. And I was like, okay, cause I, and I was like, okay, good. I'm keeping up with my milk supply, that's great. And then the nurse came in and she said, oh, on your way out, make sure you go grab your extra milk. And I was like, oh, okay, that sounds good. I didn't realize there was any extra milk. I, and she's like, oh yeah, there's some extra. So they have a cooler for you um, that you can take home the extra breast milk. Well, that's the moment I realized that I was making a lot more milk than I realized. I thought they were pretty much using all my milk every day. What that sweet milk lady meant was that she was getting all my milk. They weren't having to use any donor milk. But that didn't mean that they were using all of my milk. And they had been freezing it over this whole period. The cooler that we took home of milk was giant. Um, I realized my body was probably making enough milk for the twins and not just one baby at that point. So I was grateful to have extra milk. Um, it was all bagged up and ready to be taken home and put in our freezer for a later date. I am not donating my milk at this time. Um, we don't know when she'll need that milk. And also you have to go through a lot of tests and blood work to be able to donate milk. And I'm just not up for that at this point. So I know that that's a great thing and I hope that I can do it a little bit later in this um, journey. But right now I'm just keeping my milk and um, making sure that we have enough for Violet to have breast milk for a very long time. So that was kind of shocking, but we got to bring Violet home. It was around three o'clock in the afternoon. We got to stop by the NICU graduation sign and bring her home to meet her brothers. What an exciting day. So Violet came home on February 5th after 41 days in the NICU. She was 36 weeks and four days old and five pounds, 10 ounces. That was kind of more than I planned on sharing about her NICU journey. Um, I know many other people have much more difficult NICU journeys with, um, you know, health problems and needing surgeries and things. It was really a blessing that all Violet needed to do in the NICU was just grow and learn how to eat. Um, I know that's not the case for everybody, but um, oh, it's no matter what, it's very unnatural to have your baby away from you. I could have stayed, but that just didn't work for our family. We did find a groove, but it was exhausting. Um, bringing her home, I knew would be exhausting as well, but it just felt so wonderful to not have to jump in the car every morning um, and just be able to be home with her. My parents were still here. They, My mom loved holding her while I was getting all her stuff sorted. Oh, it was just so nice. Now, how did her brothers react? They were all just really happy to have her home. Um, it was just beautiful to see them and to, to see them like explore and see how tiny her feet were and her hands were and let them have her next to them while they did their homework and help try and feed her bottles. And just to have me home more regularly was a blessing. So the boys, have been troopers over these six months. We've really tried to um, pay attention to their needs. And while Violet was in the NICU, I really tried to be home to say goodnight to the boys. It didn't always happen, but if I noticed that the kids were having um, some issues or needed more time, I would come home earlier or I would stay, ho stay home a little bit later in the mornings. We really just adjusted every single day, looked a little bit different depending on what our family needed at that time. So that is what worked for us. Our boys were real troopers through the whole thing and that they were so excited to have her home. And of course it was nerve wracking because they do go to school and they've got all the germs. So we made sure that everybody was washing their hands really well and um, letting her get her rest and things. But um, yeah, so we brought her home. She continued to be on the bottle. Um, our cat, Luna, did not want anything to do with the baby. She was very leery of her. Um, it has now been about six weeks since she's been home. She will be three months old tomorrow. Oh, and um, 
she is currently seven pounds, five ounces. So she's still itty bitty, but we're doing everything we can to get her growing. And they're actually really happy with um, how well she is doing. We go every week or two weeks to get her weight checked. She hasn't put on quite as much weight as they would like, but we are doing things to just supplement and make sure that she's getting enough milk. Sleep has been a bit difficult. Uh, Violet does have acid reflux, so she barfs. And if it was just the barf, that would be one thing, but she gets the acid and so it really um, upsets her and she gets uh, pretty upset after her feeding. So that's kind of tricky. Um, she also had a few instances where she got like stuff stuck in her throat and didn't and was, was struggling to breathe. And that was really hard on Mark and I. So my mom was very helpful and holding her upright um, so that we could get some things done and also holding her sometimes during the night so we could get some sleep. We would switch off. So while my parents were here, that was extremely helpful. Um, we had this fancy snoo that we bought and it works great for a lot of people. They swear by them. I got two of them when we found out we were having twins because I thought these will help us get some sleep. I got them off of Facebook Marketplace. They were like in perfect condition. And so we had Violet sleeping in that at the foot of our bed. And it was really hard. She was really noisy. We were awake all the time. And so after my parents left and we didn't have my mom's help during the night anymore, um, I, one night out of sheer exhaustion, put her in her crib with a swaddle and she slept for like two and a half hours and I finally got some sleep. And so from that point on, she, other than a few naps in her snoo, she has slept in her crib and I'm actually okay with that. Um, I've got a monitor on her and we're all getting better sleep because she is bottle fed and takes a bottle so well. Um, Mark is able to get up with her and feed her at least one feeding during the night and hold her because of her reflux. She does best if you hold her up for at least 45 minutes to an hour after the feeding, which makes for a very long time in the middle of the night, especially when I need to pump. Um, I, like I said, my breastfeeding journey has not looked like what I planned. Um, I thought that I would bring her home. She would just catch on. That has not been the case. Um, she does not necessarily associate me with food. She does like with the bottle, but I have tried several times and um, because it's not an immediate thing, um, she gets really frustrated. And I'm just gonna put this in here because if somebody else is struggling with this, uh, when you have such a tiny baby and you bottle feed them, you know exactly how much they're getting. Um, and we were able to keep track of that. Um, when you breastfeed without a scale, you don't know how much they're getting. So I was having some anxiety about that when I was, I did get her to latch on a few times. I'm like, well, how much did she get? And then I would end up bottle feeding her right after and then still pumping. And I thought if I continue to do that, then I would just be feeding her, bottle feeding her and pumping all the time. So at this point in our journey at three months, she is just getting my breast milk through a bottle. Um, I still am producing just a little bit more than she's drinking. I have been able to, well, it's not just a little bit. It's, it's regulating itself and where I don't have a ton of excess now, but for a little while I was able to get up these half gallons and I did some research and was actually able to freeze dry some of my breast milk. We have this home freeze dryer and what happens is it pulls all the liquid out of whatever you're freeze drying. So in breast milk, that's like 90% of it, the water is pulled out, then you have pretty much breast milk formula. I actually use that to supplement her breast milk and um, add in a tiny scoop, I checked with my pediatrician, to add some calories to my breast milk to help her um, hopefully bulk up a little bit more. So I'm working closely with my pediatrician, but that has been really cool to be able to use the freeze dryer. I actually, while I was sitting in the NICU, scrolling on Instagram, I saw a company where you can send them your breast milk and they will freeze dry it and send it back to you. And I thought, well, I have a freeze dryer, so, I have been freeze drying that and then you put it in mylar bags with an oxygen absorber and seal it all up and then it should be good for a long time. Um, so that has been really a neat experience. 
I do hope to take a week or so and just try now that things have calmed down a little bit and that we have a little bit of a better schedule to be able to breastfeed her but that may not be our journey and that's okay. We're just gonna make sure that she's fed. And I am grateful that she takes a bottle because then everybody can help. Um, my mom was able to feed her. Uh, the boys are starting to be able to feed her because she um, knows how to do it a lot better now. For a while it was pretty tricky since she was so little. She does great burps, uh, but she does have reflux. So we're dealing with that and yeah. Here I have some excess breast milk that I have been collecting over the course of four days. I'm dividing it up into two cup increments because there are four trays in my freeze dryer. So I'm gonna put two cups in each tray and then we're gonna load them in and get this freeze drying started. It typically takes about 24 hours for the freeze dryer to complete its full freeze drying process. So we're gonna get it started here and then I'll come back and show you the freeze dried milk. Okay, the freeze dryer is beeping at me that it is done. I need to go get our stuff out. So it went 22 hours, 23 minutes. Gotta open the drain valve back there. Kind of tricky with a baby on you. So in the freeze drying process, it's removing all the liquid and then that liquid is frozen around the edges. It's amazing how much liquid is in breast milk, obviously, but. So here's our finished product. It's very flaky and dry. Then you see the ice all on the sides. That is from the breast milk pretty cool and if you're unfamiliar with freeze dryers and what the process is and what I'm doing I have several other videos explaining freeze drying make sure you check those out if this is something that interests you freeze drying is a great way to preserve food and it just so happens to be a great way to preserve breast milk as well now when I need it's like making your own formula so I just have to add water back into it mix it up in a bottle and it's like she's drinking breast milk it's just powder Next, it was time to take care of this breast milk. I scraped it off of the trays and put it into a Ziploc bag. And I did this for all four trays. And then I took a rolling pin. I'm just trying to get all the chunks out so that it turns into a powder. Very, very simple to do this. And then I put it into Mylar bags. I labeled them one tablespoon to two ounces of water is how you reconstitute it. These Mylar bags make it so that they're not exposed to light and air. And then you put an oxygen absorber in each one to help keep it nice and dry inside. And then we heat sealed each of the bags. And then we have shelf stable breast milk powder. I did talk to my pediatrician. She thought this was a great idea. So making my own formula her emergencies and she'll just be able to keep eating it once maybe I stop producing this much milk. Another question that we have gotten is how does it feel to have a daughter after having four boys? It feels wonderful. I can honestly say which e with each boy we had I was very happy. It felt right. Just like having Violet feels right. It's so fun. I'm just excited for the journey ahead with her. I love putting bows on her head um, that coordinate with her cute outfits. Um, I like, I just am excited for the journey of having a daughter. I know it will be different, but she's going to have her own unique, unique journey of being a twin here without her sister, with having these four amazing older brothers, um, having an Alaska adventurous family. Um, I think she's going to have a wonderful life. So. I love having a daughter, just like I love having my four sons. Another question is how does she do with all the loud? She honestly sleeps really well with all the chaos going around her. I really have tried to lower my expectations um, and not try and do too much because the days where I do try and do too much, I end up exhausted. So lots of naps when she's napping, um, just relaxing when I can 
and just trying to do things like have freezer meals so that I don't have to cook all the time saying yes to friends and family when they've wanted to bring over meals or offer gift cards so that we could go out to eat. Um, not necessarily our normal, but um, in this phase, that has been extremely helpful. I get asked a lot, who does Violet look like? Really, she just looks like herself. I see little bits of everybody in her, um, from her dark hair like mine, her cute little nose like Everett's. Um, all of our kids have had their own unique looks and so I really don't feel like she looks exactly like anybody. So if you think she looks like Everett, I agree. If she thinks she looks like Mark, I agree. <laughs> if you think she looks like me, I agree. I just, I really have no opinion on the matter other than, man, she's cute and I'm just so grateful for her. I did get asked if she is still in preemie size. She has graduated out of preemie size at this point and is now wearing newborn. She's not quite into zero to three month yet. I tried to put her in something and it just swallowed her. So she's right at this newborn stage, which is like, I think six to eight pounds, which she's seven pounds right now. So um, no longer preemie, not quite uh, zero to three month, but in that newborn clothing, which is crazy that they have so many different sizes, but I was very grateful for all the preemie clothes. Um, they were very helpful when we first got home and now we've been able to transition her into these cute, cute outfits um, in the newborn stage. So thank you to everyone that sent so many cute things. Um, it's been really fun to get her dressed and um, we have had to dress her in things twice, three, four times. Um, we got a lot of stuff, but it's spaced out over a two years, so I don't feel like we have too much of this newborn clothes. Um, one thing that I have been trying to do the last two weeks since my parents left is I do change her into a daytime outfit. Um, usually it's around 11 or noon when I do that after, when she, before I feed her. Um, it's really tricky with her reflux. You have to change her diaper do any changing of clothes and things before you feed her or you have to wait till the next feeding a couple hours later yeah i do try and change her just like i'm trying to get myself dressed every day it just helps my brain distinguish between night and daytime um, when sometimes it all feels like it could be a big blur so it's been fun to get her dressed and um See all these cute little outfits coming out that were sent to us so thank you again for everybody that has spoiled her um, we're also uh, using a lot of the blankets that you have sent and it's just fun to feel like we're wrapped in the love of this community it's just blown us away with the kindness we have been shown and um, we will be forever grateful. Another question is, are we planning anything for a baby Maggie? There's just been so much going on that has not happened yet. We have not come up with what we wanna do um, as a memorial to her, but we do think about her every single day and we are grateful for the things that have been um, offered to us um, to help remember her by. It's been very touching. It's still just, um, we love her so much and um, her and Violet, so. We will always try and do our best to honor her. But I'm just not sure how that will look. Oh, it's okay, sweetheart. It's okay. Yeah, so no official things planned at this point, but I just, more just don't know what to do i don't know what feels right yet so so you may have caught on after one month having her home my parents did go back home to arizona they have lots of visitors coming in the spring to visit them before they come back to alaska for the summer so they needed to go back down and be there and it was really hard to say goodbye to them. They just really helped out so much. But Mark's parents are back in town and able to come and visit and help out. They came and helped clean the house to get Violet home and made us some meals to put in the freezer. So we do have help still, but my parents did go back to Arizona, which it was very hard for my mom to leave because she had been just loving spending all those hours holding Violet. If you can't tell, she loves to be held. 
so I have things I need to get done. So she lives in this wrap a lot. She does take naps in her bed, um, but they're much shorter than the nap you can get if she's on you. So we spend a lot of time like this, washing dishes, getting ready. Um, it's also very helpful after she's eaten and she needs to stay upright for an hour. She does really good in this wrap. <sighs> Baby number five for us or six, depending on how you count it. She is baby number six. We do consider Magnolia baby number five, even though we don't get to raise her here on earth. Um, but uh, having her, our fifth child at home has not been easy. Um, having older kids that still have activities and sports and things and, um, we are a very tight knit family. Our kids need a lot of attention because we spend a lot of time together. Um, it's been a lot, uh, not bad, just hard. And I don't consider the word hard as bad. I know that you need to go through hard things. Um, it's just increased my level of love and understanding for others, but also for my family getting to take care of them. Um, like she, people will just say, is she an easy baby? No, she requires a lot of attention just because she's so tiny. Yeah, she's three months old, but she's really only what, 20 days old past her due date. So, um, or 25 days old past her due date. So she's still really young. It's just prolonged that newborn period. The newborn period is exhausting and it has prolonged it. And when you go to the doctor with a preemie like Violet, um, everything is adjusted gestationally. So they will not look for those two month old cues until she is you know, four months old developmentally because she's not that old. So she's barely starting to give us a couple smiles, um, which I know would usually come earlier. Um, she loves being carried. We've started ta taking lots of family walks. We put her in a fleece suit and then this cute little bear suit and put a hat on her head and then either Mark or I wear her and we just get all the family out because the snow is starting to melt. The pavement is showing and I didn't get out of the house pretty much the entire winter. So it has been a good motivator to get out and she loves going on walks. We've put her in the stroller a few times and pushed her that way and that works okay, but she does prefer to be on one of us. So we just are so grateful for how well she's doing. That was our NICU journey and the several weeks that she's been home. Let me just look really quick and see what other questions people had that I may not have answered um, while I do that. Our cat Luna is a little bit more interested in the baby, but not in like ever comes near her kind of way, but she will come and like sleep on my legs while I'm holding Violet. Or um, she will at least come in the room now, whereas before she like, when she realized the baby was in a room, she'd run away. She's getting lots of treats. She's getting lots of love still from Mark and I and from the boys. She still sleeps at the foot of our bed every night. Um, and gets her cuddles in. So Luna is adjusting just fine, but she's just not really interested in the baby. And I'm okay with that because Violet is so little. I just, it's good just to have a bit of a separation between the two of them. A lot of people wanted to know how the boys have reacted. How has Everett reacted to not being the youngest anymore? Everett is obsessed with Violet. He loves her. He loves helping me pick out her outfits and matching bows. Um, sometimes he likes to try and help feed her. He loves to read little books to her and brings toys to her. He will be the first one to run and grab a burp cloth or a pacifier for her. He is very thrilled with having a baby sister. Um, Weston has always been my sweetheart. He loves giving her little hugs and kisses and um, cuddles. Um, so he's adjusted well. Bennett has always had a servant's heart and loves babies. So he is the one most likely to pick her up if she is fussy or crying and cuddle her or ask to hold her while we're watching a movie or a show. Our oldest son Hunter has been wonderful. We can always hand her to him um, when we need help, an extra set of hands. Um, he's not maybe as enthusiastic about grabbing her as Bennett is, but he's been very helpful and he loves her very much. So the boys are very happy to have her home and they're happy to have a baby sister. And I've seen their moods just really lift as we've started to do things together as an entire 
family going to church together again, um, going on these family walks, being all together to do our scriptures each night and including Violet in those things. I've just seen them all just like blossom again. So it, it's important to be together and um, they're doing really well, thankfully. So I'm very happy to let you know that Violet went to the heart doctor and the holes in her heart have closed up like they should have. They just took two and a half months to do that instead of the regular two to three days. So that has been checked off. We took her to the eye doctor um, and she doesn't have, there's some problems that can happen with preemie babies. Thankfully she doesn't have those. Um, she does have something interesting going on with her eye. Um, her tear duct has not opened up. At first it was both tear ducts were not open. So she would get really goopy eyes because your tear ducts need to drain. Her right eye has now opened up, but her left eye still gets really goopy every single day because her tear duct has not opened up. I never had that happen with any of my other kids. Again, they say, give it a year. Um, and it'll hopefully clear up itself. I feel like we heard that so many times, like you just gotta give it time with these preemie babies, um, seeing with her heart and with her growth and with her eyes, and you just gotta give them a little bit of extra time to catch up. Those last 10 weeks are really important for babies to stay inside. I'm so grateful she's doing so well, but I would never wish that on anybody to have a baby early like that. Your body's not ready for them to come out. Their body's not ready. Um, and thank goodness for NICU doctors and nurses. They are angels on earth for taking care of these sweet babies. So we can't say enough good things about the doctors and nurses that took care of Violet while here at the Providence Hospital in Alaska. So very, very grateful for that. So three months old, sweet, sweet Violet is just fitting in to the family. We're adjusting, we're sleep deprived. Um, one of us stays up until 11, 12, 1, whenever she's actually ready to go to bed for the night. And then um, one of us will get up around 3 or 4 with her. And then again at like 6 or 7. So we're getting sporadic sleep, but we're at least kind of finding a schedule now that my parents are gone. And it's just our family. We're figuring it out. After this video, you will see Violet just like you see our other kids, but the videos will not be focused on her. She's just going to be part of the family from here on out. I felt like it was important to share her story, but um, our channel is about family adventures, life in Alaska. Um, this has been our journey the last six months. It kind of took over our channel because that's what we were going through. But now that she's home and she's healthy and growing, you'll just see her pop in and out of videos just like the rest of our family. Um, they will not be just focused on how she's doing. So um, we're so, so grateful for all the love, the comments, the prayers that have been said on our behalf. Honestly, it is our faith in a loving Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ that have gotten us through these difficult last six months. And I don't have a perfect understanding, obviously, of what's happened, but um, I do know that we have been looked over, we have been strengthened through it all. Um, this really stuck out to me the other day, this picture. Peace is not the absence of trouble, it is the presence of Christ in midst of the trouble. And that is what I have felt. So thank you so much. We're so grateful to have you along for our journey. We love you all very much. And we'll see you again real soon for more of this Alaska life. Summer is around the corner and I think Violet's gonna be ready to just jump in to all the adventures with us. Sweetheart. The boys are all convinced that little Violet in these tiny little overalls might be the cutest thing we've ever seen. Hi, sweetheart. Are you ready to eat? She's so ready to eat. Oh. Are you ready to eat? Let's get your bottle. Yeah.